Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorson, the channel is called Ethernet Wink, and in today's video we're going to be doing something different, as you can tell by the title. We're going to be, it's not just a regular Quant Connect Python tutorial, we're going to be explaining something in C++. Why C++? I wanted to get better at coding in C++, so I wrote something in C++. I wrote it, I wrote an order book to kind of keep it in theme to this channel as like quantitative finance and stuff like that. I'm only going to go into a little bit of like what of like trading concepts in this more so just like the computer science concept to it and it'll come up i'm sure but i'm only gonna highlight a few things about it just so that way someone that isn't as versed can still follow along just as easily now i have all the code already written we're just gonna go through and explain it all and in the description or if i forget to put it in there in the pinned comment will be all of the code that you can find for free just publicly it's there so let's jump right into it now before we keep on going I'm going to explain three fundamental errors I think are in it, things that should be different. The first thing is that our match orders kind of goes by a hierarchy. So we're checking market orders, then good till canceled, then further kill, then limit. Ideally, you would just go by time, right? If there's an order in the beginning of the order book and then one later on that can get filled, it shouldn't matter what types they are. They should get filled because they match, not because it's the same type. It doesn't matter if it shouldn't matter what type it is, it should just go by time. The second one, I'm using a vector, not an unordered map. A vector kind of just gives you a little bit more, I mean, an unordered map would just give you a little bit more finesse with it, but it is what it is. And next, uh, for my market orders, I'm setting the quantity to just be zero. Not great, but it's all right. <laughs> so now, to get into the actual code, Beginner friendly. I'm gonna explain a lot of stuff. Well, the concepts of it. Public and private functions. Well, first let's go over a class order book. What is a class, right? So our order book pretty much has everything to be an order book. Think about if I had a class called car. Well, it would have an engine, it would have seats, it would have cup holders, um, I don't know, color, a ton of stuff, right? That's pretty much the same thing for order book. It's like um, it's like one big huge thing. Like I'm trying to <laughs> I just look down here. I have a Lego car, so I'll explain it. Like a class car would have okay. I have I have wheels. I have doors right here. I have mirrors. I have windshield. Right, a ton of things like that. That all those little things put together makes this object. Same thing really for an order book. It has a bunch of different things put together that makes it an order book. And we're going to call all of them, we're going to put them all in this class. So public and private, right? Public means we can access these functions anywhere. So when we make our order book right here, this is our actual object of an order book. We can say order book dot add order. Add order is public. Print orders is public. Match orders is public. Now the private ones you might think, okay, so how do you use private ones? Private things are just things that can only get accessed by the class, by public methods. Public methods can access private methods. So find match is a private thing, but it's used all over. So it's pretty much a thing to just make your code a little bit more, more error proofed, more user proof. It's a good practice and um, we see it work out really well here. It's pretty much like helper methods that just the user doesn't have to use them. So I do have a script over here, a little one. So if you find me looking over to the side, that's pretty much just what I'm looking at. Really quickly, what a vector is. If you ever coded in Python, it's like a list. It's pretty much an unordered, not an unordered. Well, it is unordered, but it's an array that you don't have to specify how big it is before you start to use it. It can just grow with time. So let's get into our first helper method, find match. This method searches for a matching order in the orders vector. So order IT is an iterator. I'm not going to really explain what an iterator is to for, for time sake, really. But it points to an order for which we're trying to match. I'm trying to match this order. So that's what's going in there. Then we have quantity, how many shares, right? And then full match. If we need to fill every single share in this order, in this <coughs> iteration. Most of the time we don't. So I'm setting a default to be false. So now, it also, right here, what it returns, it returns an order iterator. 
So we're pretty much checking to see if this order has a match. If it does have a match, return that order. So we're going to iterate through the entire order book, pretty much is what this is saying. Now, Joe, what's this word auto right here? Well, auto, you know how when you code in Python, you can say x gets 15, and Python knows it's an integer, or x gets 15 and a half, and it knows it's a float? Same thing right here for auto. It's pretty much saying leave whatever type it is to be ambiguous. I'm not going to specify specifically that, like whatever it is. It's just going to be ambiguous. Whatever it is, it is. Call it that. The compiler takes care of that for us. Super simple. So now we're going to iterate through the entire order book. It's pretty much just what we're going on right here. Now we have to check a few things. So we can't match a buy order to a buy order or sell order to a sell order. It has to be a buy and a sell or vice versa, or sell and a buy. So that's pretty much what this is checking. If the order in our order book is not the same kind of order, not the same side by or sell as the order we want to see if there's a match for, then we can keep then we can keep going. If they're both buy orders, obviously there's nothing there for us. These two ampersands means and. And if it is a buy order, then the price has to be less than or equal to the price of the order we're trying to find. Let me say that again. If the order we're trying to look for is a buy order, then the order we're trying to match for would have to be a sell order, and its price would have to be lower, greater than, less than or equal to the order we're looking for as price. If I'm gonna, if I want to buy something at $100, but you're selling it for $99, cool, I'll take it for $99. And then vice versa for sell orders. If I want to sell something for $100, but you're willing to buy it at $101, take it for $101. That's pretty much what this is saying, but in the concept of trading, that happens a lot. You don't. You rarely get filled for the actual price you want. You'll get better prices a lot. And these two pipes, these two lines right here, they're right above the enter key on your keyboard. Shift and then that key, and you get that. This means or. So now, if full match is true, this is actually checking the opposite. If not full match, if full match is false, cool. Only one of these needs to be true. So if it's true, cool. If not, then we need to make sure that we fill the entire quantity. So if the quantity of this order is greater than or equal to the quantity of the order that we're looking at, then we can fill it. And so then we're going to return that good order. If not, we're just going to return the orders that end. Next, execute order. This purpose of this is to actually execute the order with this method, with this um, order that we found. So it doesn't return anything. It takes in the reference to this order and the reference to this matching order. So it's pretty much we're taking the reference to this and the reference to this. Reference, what does that mean? If I take this car and I park it in parking spot number nine, I don't have to actually, and someone asks me, hey, where'd you park? I don't have to tell them, hey, look for the red Ferrari A12 Competition. I can just say it's in spot nine. And then they know to go through and everything's there. The tires, the windshield, doors, everything's there already. So that's what that is saying. Not what is it, where is it? And so that's nice too because it's better. It's easier to say it's in spot nine rather than give all the details about this car. So our fill price is going to be whatever the matching order's price is. This is just a little message. We're going to see that later on when we actually run it. And then match it, match its quantity is going to be this matching this other order's quantity. Let me say it again. We're going to set the new quantity of the matched order to be the, to be the matching order's quantity minus the other matching order's quantity. So let's say the matching the original. <laughs> let's say this order's quantity is ten. This order's quantity is five. We're going to set the new quantity to be 5. That makes sense. Partial orders are a thing. If the matching order's quantity is 0, then we can remove it. If it's more than 0, you still have more shares to be executed. It's going to stay in the order book. That's what's going on right there. Then print order simply prints everything about an order. We're just getting the order's reference. Const just means that we can't change it. And then we're just going to print everything about it. So that's all of our private stuff. Now let's go up into our public stuff. So enum class. 
What's an enum class? An enum class provides everything with a enumerator with a value. So this is zero, this is one, and so on and so forth. The real good part, uh, the real good thing about this is that order type is now a type. Market is a type order type. So that way, when I actually have to initialize these orders, like I'll show you down here, I have to use the actual order type. I can't just pass in like a string that says market. I actually have to specify this is what I want. And that's a lot cleaner, a lot more concise for this. Same thing for the side. So now we have a class representing our order, right? Kind of like a whole ticket. Like when you go to a show at Madison Square Garden, you have the time, who you're seeing, what section you're sitting at, all that good stuff. Same thing, but it's just for an order. So we need an ID, an order type, a side, a price, and a quantity. Cool. Now down here, excuse me, in our private, we actually have all these variables. So after we initialize the order, we want to be able to access these variables. I don't want you to actually be able to say order.id. I just want you to be able to see it. I don't want you to actually be able to access the variable. So you have to use get ID. It's the only public thing. So that will just return, and you can't alter it. It's constant. That will just return our ID, or whatever it happens to be in that. And then set quantity, new quantity, is what, we, what it needs. And it just says quantity gets new quantity. That's kind of like for that partial fill that we were talking about. So we have an order book. Let's add some stuff to it. Method add order. It adds an order to the order book. We get a reference to the order and we put it to the back of the queue, right? That makes sense. It goes with time. Like when you go to the grocery store, whoever's in front of you online gets to check out first before you. Same thing for orders. Next, cancel order. So what does cancel order take in? An order ID. That's all we need to cancel something. So now, remove if pretty much marks whatever value we need to remove. It pretty much takes it and puts it into IT. So IT again, ambiguous type. And remove if takes a range. So we're pretty much saying from beginning to the end. And then it's a lambda function pretty much. So it pretty much checks to see if there's an order in orders that matches this ID is what we're doing down here. So like I said, it does not actually remove the element from the container. Instead, it moves the element to be removed to the end of the container, vector, whatever. It returns the iterator pointing to the first of those elements to be moved. If we're removing more than one, we're just removing one, so that's fine. The, there won't be an ID that overlaps. And so then we go through and we check if the iterator is not equal to the order's end, it's not there, it's not the same value, then we remove it. We actually erase it from our order book. And then we put a little message as well. Cool. So to recap, because it's a little chewy, we find the order using remove if, check if the order was found and marked for removal pretty much. That's what this is doing. And then remove it and print it. So now with that all out of the way, let's get into match orders. Match orders does pretty much the same thing for each order type, but off order type. So now let's go into and first talk about market orders. I'll go over them over all of them pretty briefly. So auto, again, ambiguous. What does this mean? Start at the beginning, go to the end. Right? Same for every other checking we have. Have to make sure that the type of the order is a market order. And so then match it. We're looking to see if in, if we can match an order in our order book, if this order has a matching order in our order book. And we're just going to also give it the quantity. So now, if we have if we find an order pretty much, that's good. If matching is not just the end, then we can actually execute it. And then we can actually remove it or erase it from our order book. Else, we're going to keep on going through the whole thing. Same thing for good till canceled. F same thing for limit as well. Fill or kill is where it gets different. The fill or kill, we have to say full, um, full match equals true. We have to specify that because if it doesn't get filled for the full quantity, 
for a fail or kill, fail or kill we don't want to fill it at all. Just kill it. So then, if the order is in the book, pretty much what that means, and the quantity is good, then we can execute it. Or not, we're just going to cancel it because it's a fill or kill order, and then remove it from the book. And print orders just calls this one, but in a loop for every single order in our order book. And this is pretty much saying for, again, any type, and it's a reference for any order pointer in order, print it out. We don't have to say like for I get zero, yada, yada. It's pretty much like a loop in Python right here. Now in our main function, create an instance of our order book. So here's what we're actually going to use. And then we're actually going to create sample orders. So this order, this variable is of type order book order. So now what does it need? It needs an ID. It needs a type. This one's a market. It needs a side. This one's a buy. It needs a price. This is a market order, so zero. And it needs a share count, a quantity. And it's the same thing going down, pretty much just a different order ID, different order type, and a different side for all these. Then add all them to the book, print out the orders before matching, print out the order, and then we match them, and print out the orders after matching. So to actually run this in C++, first make sure that you're in, if I list everything, um, ob.cpp is what I call it, orderbook.c++. So make sure that you're in the file, in your terminal, you're, you're at your terminal, you're in the file that you're working in. You can click ls to see what's actually in it, and you can use cd and then move to whatever directory has your file in it. Then you want to run this command, gpp, g++, and then whatever the name of your file is, dash o, whatever you want to name your output file, and then I'm using .exe, if you want to use .o, go crazy. But .exe right there, so I'm going to click enter, that'll compile it all, and then you can just run it with your output file name .exe. And then we get all of this information. So let's go through it. So this is pretty much all the orders from right here in our order book. Then we're going to match the orders, right? So matched order one with order four at price as a market order and a quantity 10. So this all these buy orders pretty much get filled. This buy order gets filled pretty much, and the sell order gets filled. And 10 shares get filled. This has 15. So order 4 is still in the order book. We see that because in the very next order, order 4 gets matched again with order 5, with a quantity of 5. We have 5 more. So now that means that order ID 5 has quantity of 5. We see that right down there. 5 more. So that's how the order book works. This fill or kill order, order book order 7, doesn't get matched with anything, so we cancel it. And then we print the order book after matching. So these two didn't have a match, but they still stay in the order book. So yeah, I hope that tutorial was good for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something. I hope that C++ doesn't seem so daunting anymore. And I hope that you have a newfound interest for it and you can go through and do it. These are the imports, by the way. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> but I hope that you guys did enjoy this video. Under 20 minutes for a beginner level C++ order book. Can't really beat it, if you ask me. But yeah, um, that's the end of the video. I do have a business. It's called Prometheus Analytics. Links to all that is going to be in the description. Link to this code will either be in the description, or if I forget, it'll be in a pinned comment. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys take this order book code, put it in your own file, and you break it, you add to it, you learn from it, and you enjoy the whole process. So yeah, my name is Joe Scorson, channel is called Ethernet Link, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.